Hey y'all, Prophet David Taylor here. Uh, welcome to all my audiences, Facebook, Periscope, and YouTube. As always, Periscope is uh, tripping, but that's okay. We're going to press forward. All right, today is Sunday, May 5th. <clears throat> Let's start with a word of prayer. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your prophetic word. Thank you for the precious Holy Spirit, O oh God. I surrender my mind, my brain, my lips. My tongue, my thoughts unto you, O oh God, speak through me, breathe through me, and let the word you've given for the body of Christ come through my mouth to glorify you and edify the saints. And we thank you for it, and we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, going to start with my tagline. What's my tagline? My tagline is that God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to the prophets. Take advantage of being a Christian. God will tell, the, tell you the future before it happens. Why would you not want that advantage? All right, please like and share this video. I want it to go to as many places as possible. And um, we are going to jump right in. Now, the prophetic word for today is make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. And we're going to look at the corresponding scripture because it has some interesting nuggets in there that I want to be sure to share with you. The first thing I want to tell you about <clears throat> being about making a joyful noise is that, is that it's not always what you think it is. It's not limited to just uh, shouting and praising and worshiping. Making a joyful noise is just what it sounds like, but I'm going to show you what it says in the Hebrew about what it really means. But what I'm going with, it, with this one is you can't be hanging around people that aren't joyful. You can't be hanging around people that aren't making the same kind of noises as you. I know that sounds funny, but it makes a huge difference in the kingdom of God. If you're trying to serve God and you're trying to praise God and you're trying to be positive and you're trying to stay in faith, because to stay in faith means that we believe God regardless of any evidence to the contrary. And the way we do that is we keep praising, we keep worshiping, we keep confessing the word of God and we keep believing. Okay, you have to be around people that are doing that same thing. If you get around people that aren't doing the same thing you're doing, you're not going to bring them up. They're going to bring you down. So that's where I was going with that, that you've got to surround yourself with people that are making the same kind of noise as you are. Again, I know that sounds funny, but it's legit in the kingdom of God. We're going to look at Psalm 100, verse 1. Okay, Psalm is the second or third biggest book in the Bible, right in the middle, uh, mostly music, different kinds of music. King David did not write all of the Psalms, but he wrote most of them. Okay, Psalm 100, verse 1, and this is a Psalm of Thanksgiving. It says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. First word in there is make. You got to do it. A lot of people are waiting for God to manifest something, and then they say, I'll praise him when the manifestation shows up. God wants you to praise him throughout the whole process, when he first promises it to you, or when you read about it in the Word, when you pray, when you believe, when you confess, praise him through that whole process, but you have to make it. You have to make a joyful noise. I want you to notice something. If you notice in your worship, if you have any form of prophetic worship, or if you feel the presence of the Lord, I want you to notice that you start praising him, and then you feel his presence manifest. Somebody's there praising him. you got to praise him to bring him on the scene. That ties back to the point number one I made, is that you can't be hanging around people that have all that negative stuff coming out their mouth all the time because God responds to praise, and that's what makes him fill any type of arena or area or space with his presence where people are praising. Another thing that praise does, point number three, is that praise creates an atmosphere of, of expectation. That's another thing that a lot of people don't quite understand when it comes to receiving things from God. You have to expect to receive from God, okay? You have to expect that the Lord is going to show up. You have to believe that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. You can't be all mealy-mouthed and negative. You've got to create, a, create an atmosphere where the Lord can show up and where his power can flow because everything that God does is by faith. You're going, the Lord is going to open his hand and offer it, but you have to pull it into your life, into your body, into your mind, into your wallet, into your relationships by faith. You have to believe it. This morning, one of the elders prayed for me at church, and I felt the anointing all over me 
while he was praying, and he said to me, the Lord said, it's yours for the taking. So God opened his hand, Elder prayed for me, but I believed it. That's why I felt it and received it in my body, because it was mine for the taking. But I have to believe it. So that's what I'm saying. The first word is make. You got to make the noise. Okay? But then it says, make a joyful noise. Now, wait now. In the Hebrew, that whole phrase, make a joyful noise, means to mar, to split the ears, or shout. Know what that means? That means that the Bible's saying you need to make an ear-splitting noise. So you don't just make some little quiet noise. You don't make some little side noise. You don't make some little leftover noise. When it says make a joyful noise, that, has, that actually says to split the ears or shout. So you're supposed to shout unto God. You're supposed to shout unto the Lord. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that things in the kingdom respond to voice activation. They respond to commands. It's why God, when he made the world, he said, let there be, let there be light, let there be uh, 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 sea animals, let there be the fowls of the air, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Things in the kingdom are activated by speaking, by noises, by sound, because there's no such thing as a silent miracle. What do you mean by that, Prophet Taylor? I mean, you can't find no miracle in the Bible where did anybody say nothing. Think about it. Go to any miracle, any of Jesus' miracles, the first one he did, the wedding at Cana, feeding the 4,000 to 5,000, any miracle Elijah did, shutting up the heavens, any miracle Elisha did, making the axe head float. You go to any miracle in the Bible, there's no miracle in the Bible that's silent. Not one. Even when God gave Abraham strength to... Con to uh, Receive seed and gave Sarah strength to receive and conceive seed to make Isaac. Abraham was 100, Sarah was 90, because the Lord said it. And not only did the Lord say it, he changed their names. He changed their names from Abram to Abraham. That H is the Hebrew breath mark, meaning God breathed on it. He changed their name from Sarai to Sarah. That's the Hebrew breath mark, meaning God breathed on her. So that means that every time somebody said their name, Abraham is father of many nations. Every time he said his name, he was saying God's promise. Sarah, that name means princess. <coughs> Excuse me. Every time she was saying her name, she was saying God's promise. Because ain't no silent miracles in the Bible. So don't let the devil or anybody make you feel like you can sit there and mope or pout. Or you don't have to open your mouth and the miracle's going to happen. But what that phrase says is make a joyful noise. It says split the ears. It says shout. Okay, so you've got to make an ear split and shout noise, and that's another reason why it's good to go to church and be around the saints, so you're not doing all that shouting by yourself, although ain't nothing wrong with shouting at home. And also, that's why you're supposed to go to a church that believes in worshiping God openly and radically and verbally and energetically and believes in making noise unto God, because that's what the Scripture says. Okay, and then it says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Okay, so there's no place we could go, no place we could be. That word earth also is translated land. That means anywhere there's a continent, we can make a joyful noise. We can make a joyful shout. We can make an ear splitting shout to God. Okay, so that's what the scriptures say. But what's the point of the prophetic word I gave you today? What's the point of making a joyful noise? Here's the point. Because as God is bringing you into the next level of blessing, the enemy is going to try as hard as he can to distract you. The enemy is going to try as hard as he can to get you over into the sense realm, to get you back into walking by sight, to make you take your eyes off of God. But if you keep shouting and making a joyful noise unto God and making an ear-splitting noise, it'll help you stay in faith. Another thing that shouting does is it helps position the angels. I know a lot of people don't understand that. But angels respond to the word of God, and angels respond to things that look like heaven. They respond to things that look like where they're from. And where they're from, they praise God day and night. Remember, there are seraphim in heaven that don't do anything but say, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all day and night. So angels are used to constant praise. So when you make praise here on earth, you're creating an atmosphere that the angels are comfortable in. They know what praise is. It's like a beacon. It's like a homing device. 
So that's why when I was young, I saw the old saints. They would praise God even while they were talking. They would just say, hey, glory. They would say stuff like that. They would say, bless your name while they was talking. And I didn't understand it when I was a kid, but I understand it now because it's a beacon. It's a homing signal for the angels of God so that when you're moving up, when you're getting a victory, when God is opening the doors for you, you're praising and you're shouting and you're telling the angels, come here and bring the blessing here. Because here is praise for God. That's right. A lot of people don't believe that, but it's so true. Do you want to prove it? Go to a church that doesn't shout. Go to a church that says, well, we don't believe in all that. Because they just a little too uppity to just, you know, do what we call get ugly for the Lord. You know, give the Lord an ugly cry. Get on the flow. Um, lay prostrate before God. Dance before God. Just whatever, you know, pour yourself out before the Lord. There's nothing wrong with that. Do you know how I know there's nothing wrong with that? Because the Bible says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But also, you do it for someone that you love. If you're in love, if, you, if you're in a romantic relationship and you love that person with all that you have, you will pour yourself out for them. Whatever it is that makes them happy, whatever it is that pleases them, whatever it is that you know they like, you'll do it. Without even worrying about how it makes you look, because that's what love is like. So if we can do that for each other, how much more than for the Lord our God? So don't be listening to them old dry, crusty, stale saints that tell you that it don't take all that. That's not true. That's why God and King David were so close. Because King David poured himself out before the Lord and praised all the time. And he didn't care what he looked like. And he didn't care what people thought. Okay? So I want you to understand that the scripture says make a joyful noise. But as you are graduating... And going to the next level, the devil's going to hit you with so many things. If I could tell you what the last couple of months of my life have been like, but I know I'm moving up and I've been seeing God bless in the midst of a whole bunch of other things going on. You know why? Because I learned how to make a joyful noise. I learned how to praise him when I feel good. I learned how to praise him when I feel bad. I learned how to praise him on the regular. I learned how to Stop looking at what I don't have and thank him for what I do have. I learned how to thank him at the beginning of my, of my day for the fact that he opened his hand and poured grace and mercy out on me. And that's the only reason I'm alive and drawing breath and in my right mind. I learned how to go to church on Sunday and praise him for them six days he just gave me. Sunday's the first day of the week and we're starting a new week. And I learned how to go to church on Sunday and let God know that I was grateful for them six days I just lived because everybody didn't make it through them six days. Some people died. Some people that was alive last Sunday are not alive now. Do you understand that? They didn't make it through the week. So if I made it through the week, I learned how to go to church and praise God for the fact that you gave me them six days. And I just thank you for them. You see what I mean? So there's so many benefits to praise. So let's review about making a joyful noise. In the Hebrew, that says an ear-splitting shout. So you got to stay away from negative people. You got to stay away from negative people that aren't making the same kind of noises that you do. Okay? You got to keep yourself in faith by keeping yourself in praise because the enemy is going to come at you and be distracting. You've got to give the angels a homing signal, a homing beacon, and a homing device so that they know what they, they can hear heaven because they're used to praise in heaven. It shows them. Where do the blessings go? Because like I told you, ain't no such thing as a silent miracle. You can't find that anywhere in the Bible. God did not even uh, create the world that way. When God created the world, he said it. When any miracle was done, somebody said it. Ain't no silent miracles. Okay? And also, you have to keep yourself encouraged as you're climbing up the mountain because you have to realize that in the midst of everything that's happening to you, God is blessing you. And when you learn to count your blessings, now you might think that's a trite phrase or it's kind of cliche or it's kind of lame. I stopped by to tell you it's none of those things. It's legit. When you learn how to get up in the morning and praise God for what you do have and stop focusing on what you don't have, your whole day is going to change. Your whole attitude is going to change. And I have discovered that when you do stuff like that, you learn how to savor things. You learn how to savor experiences. Even a meal, even a meal tastes better when your mouth is full of praise. 
If you don't believe that, I challenge you to try it. I challenge you for the next seven days when you wake up to look around and look at all that you have that God has blessed you with. Don't look at what you don't have. Don't look at your bills. Don't look at if you're struggling with your finances, whatever. Don't look at what you don't have. Look at what you do have and start praising God like you're crazy for what you do have. And watch what happens in your life. <coughs> seven days. I thought by to tell you your food will taste better. I was drinking something. I think I was drinking some soda the other day, and it tasted so good. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. I was enjoying every sip. Water tastes better to me now. Everything tastes better to me now. Everything is different. When your mouth becomes full of praise, when your mind becomes full of gratitude, when you learn how to do what the Bible says, make a joyful noise. Now, something else I've learned I'm going to throw in. God is looking for people that are not arguing with him. You don't have to help the maker out. You hear me say that a lot. You don't have to help the maker. God is looking for people that are not arguing with him. If the Lord tells you to do something, just do it. It may not make sense. It's not going to make sense to your natural, natural mind. You might think it's crazy. You might think a lot of things. But if it's in the scripture or you get a prophetic word from the Lord and the Lord tells you to do something, no matter how you feel about that word, just do it. And the Bible says, make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. And there is another scripture that says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. I learned to adopt that too. I learned to bless him at all times. I learned to continue to praise him. And I mean like when I'm doing laundry. I mean like when I'm driving. I mean like when I'm, when I'm washing dishes in my kitchen, when I'm working. I learned to let his praise be in my mouth and my life is transformed. My soul is different. Okay, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And also in church today, uh, when the saints get on one accord, the glory and the anointing of God manifest in a thick way in the temple. And that's why if you're used to praising the Lord, it's not this big leap to praise him in church. But if you haven't praised him all week, now you're trying to muster up himself, that can be a little bit harder for you. But when you're used to praising him in your home, okay, then it's not this big leap for you, for you to praise him in the house and then you feel his anointing. See, the reason God's glory is so important is because he brings a lot of things with him when he comes in the room. Like this morning in church, he brought physical healing, but that's scriptural, that the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. Literally, when God comes in the room, he brings physical healing with him. He also brings money with him. He brings open doors. He brings favor. He brings ideas. He brings networking and connections. He brings forgiveness. There could be somebody in the church that you're mad at. By the time you get to praising God, I guarantee you're not going to be mad no more. You can't love Jesus and be mad at people. It cannot happen. You spend some time praising God and basking in his love and basking in his glory. I don't care how mad you was before. Because you can't praise God and keep an attitude with it. You can't do it. Because he's just too good. So there's so many benefits to praise. That's what I'm saying. It's part of our weapon arsenal. It's part of the thing we do as Christians. You hear me say that all the time. Take advantage of your advantages as a Christian. Don't just always be talking about what the devil's doing and, oh, the devil's so busy. And, oh, Prophet Taylor, you don't know what I've been through and this happened and blah, 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 blah. Uh, of course that happened. That happens to everybody. But when you learn how to praise your way, when you learn how to praise God regardless, I'm telling you of the detailed benefits that happen. They're amazing. Okay, and like you hear me say every week, I'm not telling you to do something that I'm not doing. I'm doing what I'm telling you to do, and I'm telling you I'm seeing a transformation. Because it just resets your whole mind, it helps you realize that in, in spite of what the devil is doing at you in the moment, you can see how God is blessing you in spite of the turmoil. You can see Romans 8, 28 kick in. That no matter what the devil is throwing at you, by the time the hand of God gets through with it, it's worked together for your good. It's the most amazing, amazing thing, and praise helps you see that. You see what I mean? I'm going to give you this last little nugget, and then I'm going to be done. Praise helps you see things that are happening in the Spirit. What do I mean by that? Have you been praying for someone to reconcile with them, or that they would come to Christ, or that y'all could get your relationship back together? You ever prayed that kind of prayer? I stopped by to tell you that when you praise God, sometimes God gives you a little glimpse of what he's doing over there with them. Sometimes God will show you his grace and his mercy pouring out on them because of your prayer and your praise. Yes, he will. There's nothing like God showing you what's going on in spirit because it keeps you encouraged. 
Because God answers as soon as you pray, but sometimes the answer takes a while to manifest, especially when you're working with somebody's heart, because God does not force you. God knows how to bring you to your knees now, but you still have to make a choice because this is the free will system. But sometimes when you've been praying for God to work on somebody's heart, God will show you the work in progress. Sometimes he gives you little glimpses in the spirit, and he does that when you praise him. Yes, he does. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. You can't be hanging around Christians that don't want to praise the Lord. And you can't be going to a church that has no glory that don't want to praise him. Because there's too many benefits in praising him. And you've got to learn how to make an ear split noise. You've got to learn how to open your mouth. And Jesus, at the top of your lungs, you got to learn your catchphrases. When I was growing up, the old folks used to say, bless him and bless your name and hiya and stuff like that. You got to find whatever your phrase is in the spirit and say it at the top of your lungs. Walk through your house and say your prayer phrase to God and watch what happens. Watch what happens to your living space. God will beautify your living space. I'm, I'm trying <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, I know what I'm talking about. Okay? So, today's prophetic word was make a joyful noise. Our scripture reference was Psalm 101. Okay? Go back and watch this tape over. I gave you a lot of information, a lot of principles, a lot of nuggets. And I referred to some other scriptures. So go back and watch this again so you don't miss anything. Okay? Now, if you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen now so I can pray over uh, anything you're praying about. Remember I told you when I close my eyes and I start speaking in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost about healing, casting out demons, finances, and if he has any more words, he wants me to release. So put your prayer requests on the screen right now if you want me to pray. Okay, all right, I'm going in the spirit. Okay, the Holy Ghost said, God is going to heal and change your whole countenance. I don't know if that means that you have scars or damage on your face, or I don't know if that means you just frowned up all the time. Either way, the Holy Ghost just said he's going to heal your countenance. You're going to become a smiling person. You're going to have a happy face. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody out there listening to me or somebody watching me on the replay, you're going to have a smiling face. You're going to have a smiling countenance. You may not have smiled in years. Your happiness, your happy face is going to come back by the Spirit of God. You'll see. Woo. Woo. Okay. God is saying this is the fifth month. The number five. Now, if you don't know, there's a, a strong numerical system in the Bible. One is the number of God. Two is the number of witness. Three is the number of perfect witness. Four is the number of foundation, four corners of the earth. Five is the number of grace. It represents the fivefold ministry of God. It represents your hand, God's hand, four fingers and a thumb. Uh, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, five grace offices. What the Holy Ghost just told me is because this is the month of May, there's going to be a shower of blessings from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. In other words, God's going to open his hand. God's going to open his hand in the month of May and shower down a crown of blessings from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Wow. Okay, I received that. If don't nobody else receive it, I'm receiving that one. Wow. Wow. We're coming into a month blessed. And today is the fifth. Today is 5 5 2019. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's why you gotta 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 get a prophetic word from the Lord. So you can stay in sync with what God is saying right now. And the Holy Ghost just said. May is going to be a month of a shower of blessings where from the crown of our heads to the sole of our feet, God is going to open his hand and bless. Wow. I'll take it. If don't nobody else want it, I'll take it. Right now, I cast out any hindering spirits in the name of Jesus. Any spirit that would be hindering the blessings of God, I cast you out right now in Jesus' name. I speak to you. Doubt, unbelief, fear, low self-esteem, shame, guilt, uh, blockage. Wicked people getting in your face, trying to take your joy, trying to stop you from doing what you do. In the name of Jesus, I cast you out. All right, Sally Butler, right now I pray for your Facebook group. If there's more that God wants you to do in it, he will reveal it to you in Jesus' name, that God will use you to your fullest capacity, that you will surrender your mind, your brain, your, your lips, your tongue, your words, your hands, your whole self to God, and whatever God wants to take you to, 
He will do it in Jesus' name. Okay, Sally, I'm sensing. My group is called I Love the Word of God. Amen. Sally, I'm sensing that God wants to take you to a new level. There's a new prophetic level he wants to take you to, a new water level. So what you need to do right now, Sally, is surrender and believe. Go to Father God and say, I surrender to this new level you want to take me to, and I believe you for it, Father God, in Jesus' name. And right now, Sally, I release to you, I release to you that new water level of the prophetic. I release to you that new fire that God wants to put in you. I release to you a new accuracy in discernment. And I release to you a new love and a new level of exegesis for the word of God. Amen and amen. It's released to you right now, Sally. It's yours right now. Believe it, receive it, and walk in it. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay? I was casting out any kind of hindering spirits. And we're already set up, primed up for the Lord to rain blessings out on us for the month of May. Praise God. I'm excited. I'm excited for the month of May. Anytime God tell you I'm going to open my hand and I'm going to shower you from head to toe, it's a good month. So <laughs> I'm excited for the month of May. I'll take it. I'll praise him. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. I'll praise him. I'll praise him by myself if I have to. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. You know, I appreciate you greatly. Those of you that watch me live, those of you that pray for me, and those of you that watch the replay, you know, I appreciate it. I count it an honor to be used of God. Because it's a privilege to have the word of God in your mouth. Because we just claim breath. God don't owe us nothing. God don't need us. What was God doing to run the world before you were born? God don't need you. God don't need me. God gives us an opportunity to be a part of his eternal kingdom. To tap into something that's not going to fade away. To get things in this life that only God can give you and to get rewards in the next life that will be eternal. They don't rust out. They don't wear out. They don't go away. So serving God is an opportunity to invest in the eternal kingdom. I appreciate you too, Sally. God bless you. Okay? Because God don't need me. So I count it as an opportunity and a blessing if the Lord put his word in my mouth. That's his holy word, and I'm just clay. So I'm happy to be used of God. And those of you that are in ministry, I want you to feel encouraged. And those of you that feel a call to ministry, accept your call. I know you have to take up your cross. I know you don't want to do it. I know you're afraid. I know people are going to talk about you. But do it anyway. If God calls you, do it anyway. It'll be, be the best decision you ever made. And God will use your life to bless many people. It'll be the best decision you ever made the day you surrender to your call uh, to Father God in Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so I want to encourage you. So God bless. It's a good word from God. I'm encouraged. I hope you're encouraged. I'll see you same time next Sunday. Now remember, I'm going to be on this Thursday at 7 with my No More Genie series where I'm teaching about getting away from the genie concept of God and getting into a real concept of God, concept of God real faith based on the word and not based on hearsay and tradition and a whole bunch of crazy stuff, okay? So check me out this Thursday, 7 o'clock, right here on Facebook Live and Periscope, 7 p.m., and I'll be back next Sunday. I've got an author book signing, but that's on Saturday, so I'll be here on Sunday for my live prophetic work, okay? God bless you. Have a good rest of your day. I'm going to give me some food, and it's a good day. I had some spiritual food. Now I need some natural food. God bless, and I'll see you soon. Praise him. Praise him till your ears split. Praise him. And don't hold back.